Hey guys, Dan Williams here from Range of Motion Business Mentoring. Thank you for joining me for this webinar. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you uh, just a minute or so. I know most of you will be watching this on replay, on delay, uh, but I'll just give it a minute or so for those of you who are joining us live to jump on. As I do, guys, I'll just give you a quick intro into what we'll be covering today. So basically, what I wanna do is show you how to, how to plan um, how to set some targets for your business, how to maintain focus in your business uh, during 2020. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna be able to consolidate all of this information for you onto one A4 sheet of paper. This is mine and I'm gonna be talking you through some of that today. So that's the plan. We're basically gonna go um, through how to create a bit more simplicity in your business, how I do that personally. We're gonna use range of motion as a bit of a case study here. Um, how, when, and why I do this. Uh, we're gonna talk about what you should be including on this A3 sheet of paper, how to basically then systemize this process to break down what actually needs to be done on a day-to-day -day basis to reach some of these targets. We'll talk about some of the key pillars that need to be in place to support your business, how we can identify your focuses and income streams for the year, and also how some of your core values can be incorporated into, into this nice, succinct A3 sheet. Okay, so as we go, guys, uh, please feel free to post questions, comments, or thoughts below. Uh, I will do my best to either answer them as we go today, um, or I'll jump back on and we can open a dialogue later. There will be some things that we'll sort of pull on the thread of and go a little bit down the rabbit hole on, on some areas. But if I mention anything in passing and you would like more detail on it, uh, chances are I have much more information available. So, guys, let me first introduce myself. My name is Dan Williams. Um, I am the uh, Director of Range of Motion. Part of what we do is our business mentoring. So, we work with, with individuals in in all areas really, but in particular with health and fitness based businesses um, to help them to build a business that will make their lifestyle what they choose as opposed to having a business that determines what you do, it's having a lifestyle which then will determine your business. So um, the first thing I wanna talk about today is the fact that when you start a new business, as you begin a new business, a new venture, it's, it's quite simple. So again, if you're in a health or fitness business, you start that new business, it's very simple. Your clients come in, they pay you money, you train your clients, there's an easy value exchange there. And what begins to happen as your business becomes more mature is it increases in complexity. They become more and more moving parts. And as you get more cogs in the machine of your business, if one of those cogs was to fail, the whole thing collapses or even if it doesn't collapse, the business starts to run sub-optimally. Sub so what you'll find is you get a very immature business, a new business, which is very simple. Then as your business becomes slightly more mature, it becomes complicated, more moving parts, more cogs. And this is the point where a lot of people exit business because it becomes overwhelming to them. They get to that point where they lose control, they have too many plates, spinning too many balls in the air and it no longer works. What I wanna do with you today, using an A3 sheet of paper to keep this simple, is find the simplicity on the other side of complexity. So when you get to that sort of self-actualization level, I guess, of your business, you go from an immature business which is very simple, a more mature business which becomes complex, and then a systemized and automated business, which is what we're talking about today, which is that simplicity on the other side of complexity. That's what we're chasing. So let's, let's talk first about how I actually do this. Again, this is, this is an A3 sheet of paper that I have, um, which you can see is laminated. I'll talk to you about why that's laminated in a moment. And that allows me to view everything to do with my business in one place to keep my focus for the year. So every six months, um, just after Christmas and around the end of the financial year, I will, I will take a day or two, usually sitting on a beach down and yelling up, and I will get my thoughts on paper and I will take all of the mess and all of the spinning plates of the business and get them into one succinct piece of paper. Now, the reason I do this every six months is because things change. So it's always a 12 month plan. Yes, I have plans that go up to a decade plus, and yes, I have plans for the next day, week, or month, but this strategy in particular is always a, 
always a 12 month plan. However, I do it every six months. So in a couple of weeks time, I'll be sitting on a beach and yelling up and I'll be putting together what my goals and focuses are for the following 12 months. Now, when the end of the financial year comes around, around June, July, I'll do exactly the same thing. This allows me to check in and say, yes, these things are still applicable or no, some things need improving and adding to here. Maybe some things need taking away. So there's always this six month overlap where you're overlapping six months of the year, which means you've got like a constant moving average there. So um, let me talk you through some of the things on this sheet. And I'm gonna use my business, I'm gonna use range of motion here as, as a little bit of a, um, a bit of a case study for what we're gonna be doing. So some of the key areas that we're gonna be talking about that end up on this A3 sheet of paper, um, we've got some of the goals and targets for the business for the following 12 months, some of the pillars that must be in place to support the business, these things that are non-negotiable, which we'll touch on in a moment. Um, there are the focuses for the business, so where my attention needs to be, and then also the core values that I have that our business has, which allows me to make some of the decisions. So from maybe a month out from the new year or the new financial year, I'll start writing down on my glass board behind me here or on an Evernote document. Um, I'll start writing down those things that I wanna be focusing on for the following 12 months. Now, if you don't use Evernote, it's a great idea. It's a good uh, tool to basically outsource the the filing cabinet part of your brain and put that into some digital software. So take a look at that. It's something you can access on your phone and, and constantly update. Uh, so I'll start putting these ideas down, not necessarily putting them into sections yet. And then as I take this time every six months, I'll have this big list of all the things that I wanna achieve, all of the targets for the business, then I can put them into sections. So let me talk you through what some of the sections are here uh, on, on my current which is my 20, 2019 to 2020 goals, actions, pillars, focuses, and core values. So the first section is the range of motion facility, and I'll just give you an example or two for, for some of these so you can see the sorts of things that, that I would put under each of these headings. So first section, range of motion facility. Some of the points under that, I will have 150 people enter our sales funnel in the 2019 to 20 financial year. Um, it may seem low, but it's the nature of the business that, that I run. Uh, another point there, I will self-fund the opening of ROM's new facility by the 1st of September, 2019. Next section, network, professional relationships and opportunity exploration. Um, so this is basically talking about how I'll develop my network, improve my value there. Uh, next section, range of motion individualized programming, which is talking about the, the online programming side of the business. Um, and we've got five different focuses or targets for that. Range of motion nutrition coaching is another section. Uh, products, one of the items I've got here is pursuing the commercialization of a, a product that we've developed, um, a physical product that we've developed. Uh, next section is events. For example, I will sell 60 tickets for the ROM, PD, and Range of Motion Athlete Camp. Fitness professionals is another heading, talking about some of the value I can give to you guys as fit pros. Um, next heading, Range of Motion Mentorship. So you can see each of these has different, different goals or targets under it. Systems, uh, Fitness Educators, which is an online learning course platform that I run. Uh, My Fitness File which is a piece of software that I founded a few years ago. Um, and basically, a lot of my goals around that pertain to range of motion, purchasing the other 50% stake, which we've now done in that. And finally, finance. So all of the, all the goals and targets of the business have fit into one of those key areas. And it basically, it basically allows me to then say, these can now go into one of these areas. I know where my focuses are gonna be. Um, it's important with these that they are all time-based. Now, obviously, as health professionals or as fitness professionals, if you guys are watching this, you know the importance of your goals being time-based with your clients, really important here. And it's important because of Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law basically tells us that the amount of time it takes to, to complete a task will expand to, to fill the amount of time available to complete that task. So um, something like I'll self-fund the opening of Range of Motion's new facility by the 1st of September, 2019. Having a set deadline on that 
means that it gives me a sense of urgency. Um, if, you're, if you're a student and the teacher says, this piece of homework is due Friday, you'll finish at midnight Thursday. If they say it's due Tuesday, you'll have it done to the same quality on Tuesday. So put those self-imposed deadlines there. It's important and then stick to them like your life depends on it. Otherwise you just condition yourself to be the sort of person who doesn't stick to the commitments that they set themselves. Uh, so let's, let's talk about now what we do with each of those points. So each of those points below your subheadings then needs to become an action step. So let me find an example here. Um, so let's say that we're going to talk about uh, having a full video and photo exercise library. So this comes under the heading of systems. This is one of my goals or targets for the systems. Uh, I will have a full video and photo exercise library of all range of motion session flow and other exercises published by the 31st of December 2019. So this is talking about a resource that we are just about to finish putting together. It's basically 280 exercises that we've had professionally filmed in 4K with a videographer. It's gonna be a comprehensive library which is going to sort of percolate both through what we're doing in-house with our clients um, at Range of Motion in our facility, also our online programming, a lot of our education work as well. Now from that, there have been somewhere between 60 and 70 tasks that need to have been done to achieve that. So for, for each of the headings, which you see in bold, for each of the headings, you've got a, a series of bullet points. For each of those bullet points, there may be as little as one, two, three, or as many as a hundred action steps that need to be taken. So what I do is I put each of those action steps into my task manager. I choose to use Todoist. Todoist is basically a way to, to outsource the memory part of my brain, these are the tasks I need to do, into a piece of software. So basically I will just wake up every morning and I check Todoist and it tells me exactly what I need to do for that day. Not only the day-to-day -day operations like um, check that the fridge is stocked or uh, post on social media um, a client story featuring some sort of success, etc. Not just that stuff, but also the things that maybe I planned eight months ago and I know that the timeline tells me that this needs to be done now. For example, um, this one we were looking at putting together this exercise library, I know that it will take a certain amount of time to get this live on the website. It'll take me a certain amount of time to do the coding for the site. It'll take me a certain amount of time to do the editing, It'll take me a certain amount of time to actually film it. It'll take a certain, and so we work our way backwards and, and work out how long each thing will take, assuming it will take longer than you expect and, and assuming it will be more expensive than you expect as well. Um, so we work our way backwards putting all of these things into Todoist or whatever task manager you choose to use. So you know that by the time the 31st of December comes around, which was the goal for that project for me, it will all be done. And it looks like we're gonna come in about, uh, about 13 days ahead of schedule. And again, this is something that was planned 12 months out. So everything has come down to getting it ready to, to be finalized by when the deadline is set. So. Everything you have on here needs to be turned into a series of action steps. And for, for a series of targets financially um, and otherwise for the year like that, I would have maybe, maybe a thousand action steps in total that I would need. Now, I'm not going down and putting all thousand in here straight away every six months, but as I build and develop these projects, that's how many tasks I'm probably ticking off my list just to get these things done. So subheadings, then actions under each of those. So let's, let's take a step back now. That, that basically covers what all your goals and targets will be and how to put them to use and how to put them to action. I wanna talk a little bit about the facility now in particular. So you can see range of motion facility is up the top here. And there are, there are certain things under that. For example, I'll have 100 pe 150 people enter our sales funnel, um, self-fund the opening of the new facility, um, certain systems that I'm trying to build out, client surveys that we're looking to run, um, things that we need to do to develop our culture and core values. They're all listed under there. Now, in the facility in particular, because that does take a lot of my time, there are also certain pillars that I know need to be in place for that to be a success. Now, 
they may be different for you, but I've identified four pillars, and if I look after these four things, I know the facility is being looked after. If one of these pillars starts to fall away for too long, I know that the, the overall picture is being compromised and the business will start to collapse, at least the exercise facility part of the business. So, four things, four pillars for range of motion. They may be different for you, but I'll share, I'll share ours with you. The first is the facility. There's the development of the facility, the organization, and the cleanliness. If those three things are good, if the facility pillar is being taken care of, tick, that pillar is gonna support that corner of the business. The second is the staff. This comes down to three things. It comes down to care for the staff. We genuinely have to care for them. They are the most important people in the business, bar none. It comes down to professional development. Are we looking after and growing the staff? And it comes down to adherence to systems. Do we have systems in place and are the staff sticking to those systems? So those are our two pillars so far, facility and staff. Third pillar is marketing. This comes down to our website and search engine optimization, social media advertising, Google ads, referrals, inbound marketing, which is content and a documentation of the business. That's the marketing pillar. Final pillar is the client experience, which comes down to two things. The micro experience, what is happening when they come in every time? What is the journey or the through line or the story that, that they are a part of every, every day when they come in? And then there's the macro experience, and this is very much the culture. These are the four pillars for range of motion. The facility, the staff, the marketing, and the client experience. I can look at these every day and say, is there one of these that I'm neglecting? Now, 2019 has been a big year for the facility because we've upgraded to new premises. We've invested a lot of time, money, effort, and resources into that. So there's been a big focus there, which means I haven't had the time to give to the other three pillars as much. And this is something that I now need to work on. Balance is a myth. You can't be completely balanced all the time. But on average, like a tightrope walker, on average, you have to be balanced over that tightrope or it collapses. Same thing here with business. Although I can be biased towards the facility, I'm then gonna to have to bias to another area, to the client experience, to the staff, to the marketing, etc. cetera. And, and that's what 2020 is about. It's about having a little bit more balance there to ensure that the business is being supported. It's a really easy way just to look at it. Are these four pillars in place? Therefore, the business is being supported. Uh, Another, another section I have to this is focuses and income streams. Now, there are a lot of strings to the range of motion bow. There are a lot of things that we are doing. So what I like to do is as things get complex, I just like to be able to look at an easy list and say these are the things that I need to be focusing on in this 12 months. And I'll share, I'll share mine with you. So these are the focuses and income streams which sits in this table down the bottom of the A3 sheet here. So focuses and income streams. The first is the range of motion facility and getting more clients. The second are our events, athlete camp and professional development weekend. Third is uh, growing our business mentorship program. The fourth, range of motion individualized programming, which is our online programming. The fifth is ROM nutrition coaching. The sixth is uh, developing our session flow systems, which we put a lot of work into, which is the journey the clients go through every time they come in, the micro journey and that exercise library I was talking to you about. Uh, the sixth is a, a purchase, a rebrand, and a development of the software that I mentioned I was a 50% owner of, which we've now brought completely in-house for our clients. And the final one was uh, developing my network and an exploration of some other opportunities. So those are the eight things. So as much as things get crazy, and I don't know what I should be focusing on, because I love working, I enjoy, I enjoy the challenge and the growth and the development, it's a hobby for me, not just a job, which is cool. Um, but if I, if I have all this focus and this attention, but I don't know where to aim it, I don't know where to uh, direct it, these are the focuses. These are the eight things. If I'm not working on one of these eight things, then I'm not moving the business in the direction that I'm hoping to build it. Finally, the final thing you see here on this A3 sheet, these are our core values. and. I've run another webinar on this and I do have some content on this. So if you, if you are interested in, in learning more about the core values and 